Hey guys, it's Flying R ASMR here, and I thought today we could uh, go through one of these old car magazines. Uh, most of them are car and driver, but there is this one Motor Trend one, and uh, I kind of got a few of these as, as a beginning hobby, I guess you could say. I like reading about old car stuff, and I guess new car stuff too, but mostly old. It's just something that uh, you get from it when it's not online. And I think nothing else can really match it. Uh, so I only have five of them right now, which is a good amount. Uh, the, the headline for this one, Motor Trends from uh, October 1969. Uh, King Cobra Jetstream. And as you can see, it's a 1970 King Cobra with some type of aerodynamic stuff on it make it go faster I guess this one from August of 1988 of course the Ferrari F40 one of my personal favorite supercars of all time I don't even really like supercars but the F40 and the 288 GTO and the McLaren F1 those are just so amazing to me. And then uh, on the back we have from April of 89 we have the NSX when that first came out. And like I said there's, there's something about reading as if you were in the time period when these cars just came out. There's something you just get from it. It's completely different from just reading it online. Even if there is a small price you have to pay. And then these last two. From June of 1961. Interesting uh, front wheel drive race car. I don't think that worked out too well. Probably not. And then the other one from December of 61. It has the... XKE, the 1962 Corvette, and more importantly, the W196 Mercedes. So of all these that we have, I don't know which one I'm going to go through. Like I said, if this is a magazine from December of 1961, it's not going to be in the greatest of condition, but it's still cool to have. I mean, all these period correct advertisements and things like that, advertisements and commercials and these things with the, a price that doesn't make you want to cry. <laughs> old photos and of course all these British roadsters right here the MG Midget the MGA, the Austin Healey and uh, the Sprite which is one of the happiest looking cars you can possibly look at if you've seen the first generation Miata and you think you're happy then wait until you see an Austin Healey Sprite oh boy then the uh, index here So we have the XKE, looks like it's going to be more or less starting off, and then it'll go to the 1962 Corvette and the Porsche Carrera, uh, eventually we'll get to the $16,000 Transporter, which is a very interesting uh, story, and the 
W196 and where they drove it and I'm assuming gave them a review. <laughs> Russian rallying in 1910. The Jaguar versus the Corvette. Which should be a pretty interesting uh, review because there's kind of different cars. And then Bonneville, which is always great. Citroen was uh, I guess part of the US and actually imported their cars here. Which uh, doesn't happen anymore and for good reason. <laughs> thousand dollars that's uh that's kind of strange you can probably find one of these so i'm not sure what condition would be in but you can certainly find one of those for that amount of money three thousand four thousand dollars i know if you wanted a, a good one it'd be more like seven to eight thousand same thing with the uh Fiat's. I don't remember which exact model. And advertising a supercharger in 1961. It's slightly before they uh, got famous. And then the Pontiac Tempest Le Mans, which of course would lead to the GTO, uh, what was it, four or five years later. And that's what started the entire muscle car phase. Hundred and eighty five horsepower aluminum V eight. That's actually uh strange. It's a good idea to advertise aluminum way back when. Pikes Peak. Oh man, that's when they still had the dirt track. That's when it took actual guts to go on there. You have to be crazy. shocks great back then great now that's what the price was this general advertisement doesn't say anything about pricing the Simca 5 It's actually a fairly strange car. Uh, it was uh, basically made for economy driving, you know, good miles a gallon, which is pretty unusual back then. compare their uh, specifications to their competitors such as the Volkswagen Beetle and the Renault Gordini strange looking car of course it has more horsepower it has two more doors than the Beetle it has a better electrical system A fair bit heavier than the competitors, so.
just talking about the Bonneville Salt Flats, which is great for a top speed. People, manufacturers, will make these super aerodynamic cars with pretty decent amount of power back in the day and just let them wild. One of my favorites of the Airstream cars was the Auto Union Streamliner from, uh, what was it, 1937, I believe. Which is, uh, they're certainly strange looking cars, <laughs> to say the least. And then, they're already talking about the XKE and the 62 Corvette. Of course, the E Type, which is uh, one of the most E Type being one of the more collectible cars ever made. Personally, I think they're a little bit overrated. That's just me. I'm not saying I wouldn't own one or have one or drive it for a day. I'm just saying they get more attention than I think they deserve. I don't really see the beauty in them as much as other people do. But they're still cool. I will say I love how enormous the hood is because it's all just one piece including the fenders. And it's just so cool to look at it like it is right there. And of course, uh, Corvette convertibles are always popular too. And the succeeding year, the 63 split window, that's one of, if not the most collectible cars ever made. If you don't have one of those in your garage, you don't really have a collection at all, basically. Of course, that's up to opinion, but, I mean, it's kind of truthful anyway. here the compression ratio 11.25 to 1 from the 327 just uh, pretty high but for back in the day everything was mostly running 8, 9 some of the other ones were maybe even low in the 7s and the 0 to 60 according to their time 6.9 seconds for the 4 speed and 8.8 .8 seconds for the automatic. And uh, W196. This car is actually sold at auction uh, it was in 2013 something about 30 million US dollars of course uh, the only car I can think of off the top of my head that sold for more was the Ferrari 250 GT or GTO I forgot which one but that was something like 43 million dollars or something crazy like that this car has all types of significance in the, the racing world really feel like getting too into it as a Mercedes fan. 
but uh, you could say it's worth every penny if you wanted to. Nobody would have a problem with that. Corvairs. Oh boy. They were uh, not exactly the greatest of cars. And here's the $16,000 transporter. And I was going to say it's just, just crazy. <laughs> Act now, and you can save exactly five cents. If you buy two, you can even save more. I don't know if these were actually sold or they're just uh, made more or less as an advertising joke. Sounds like uh, they actually were made. A 48 gallon fuel tank. Nice coat. Nice furry, fluffy coat. Like a race car driver. It's interesting to think that all this happened so long ago. I mean, car names like the Chevelle, the Nova, the GTO, the Mustang, the, uh, the Roadrunner, the Challenger, the Charger, the Barracuda, all those happened many years after this was made, after this magazine was published. And yet, uh, keep that in mind. It's like, well, where's the muscle car advertisements? You have to remember 1961. Nobody really was too interested in going fast until until uh, the GT40 came along and just kind of messed with Ferrari's heads. That's a great car. Martin DB5, I believe. It's interesting to see that car at a Bonneville salt flat. All this is mostly more advertisements. You can get European license plates. That's actually pretty cool. Fortunately, we can't have European license plates in the U.S. even though they look much better than the U.S. plates. Especially the Texas license plates, which is just white with black letters, and that's it. It's kind of annoying. gift sets. Actually, let's look at this real quick. Not quite.
quite sure if you'll be able to read that. I mean, you can get racing mirrors for six dollars, and leather hood straps for ten dollars, and racing goggles for twelve dollars. A Nardi steering wheel, seventy dollars. I was actually looking at getting a wooden aluminum Nardi steering wheel for my car, and then I saw the price. And I have to remember that those don't have airbags either. I can tell you now, it's not seventy dollars anymore. It's well above that, and I almost cried because you're just so beautiful. It's uh, pretty similar to this this one actually. It's not quite the same, but you get a whole racing suit for seventeen dollars. Free flow exhaust systems for the Fiat Dolph Hendra and the Spider the Corvair. These are big back in the day. The uh, slot car racing, kind of derby style cars, honestly, a mix of. IndyCar and uh, Derby, <laughs> in a way. These aren't terribly expensive if you look at it from today's, but back then, $50 for a toy car and a little figure A track, you know, maybe some grandstands, a uh, tunnel. Be cool to have. list. I mean, a Toyo Pet Land Cruiser. <laughs> uh, the Vauxhalls, which is this, a, uh, lobby, a, a German Chevrolet, basically. The same thing with Holden, which is Australian. The Volvo 1800, those are awesome. The Carmen Gia's. The, um, the older Impalos are great. Thunderbird. Mm. Plymouth's. This before they got to a uh, super burden phase. Cool to look at. This page was cut. It's unfortunate. And there's some. Uh, sales. None of them mention. Oh, I guess they do. Yeah, oh well. And uh, that's it of course. The E-Type Coupe and E-Type Convertible advertise the 150 mile an hour top speed. And, uh, I guess that's it. So maybe we can uh, look at one of these other ones another time. Uh, probably this one or the F40. But 
uh, yeah. Have a good day.